going to talk about wealth and poverty. Wealth and poverty. Amen. I don't know why you are excited about it, whether it's the poverty side or the wealth one. <laughs> wealth and poverty are very powerful forces. They are forces that rule the world. The world is ruled by these two forces, wealth and poverty. And they drive everything that happens in the world. Poverty is a very powerful force. People may not see it, but a lot of people's profession is based on poverty. Without poverty, they will have no job. For those people, it is important that poverty continues. A lot of the work the United Nations does is based on poverty. And for the UN to survive, people must be poor. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. But the destruction of the poor is their poverty. It's a very powerful phrase. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. But the destruction of the poor is their poverty. So that clearly tells you that poverty is a destroyer. It is that which destroys the poor. And it beats my imagination why anybody will embrace a destroyer as a friend. Or anybody will preach that a destroyer is good for you. Because the destruction of the poor man has... Wealth does not include things like cars or household items like televisions, fridges, furniture because they are not readily converted into cash and lose value with time. So when you go to buy a brand new car from the day the moment you drive the car from the lot out it loses about 20 percent of its value just by driving it out that that means that if you bought a car drove it out returned it the next day you will be the price of your car will be discounted so the car hasn't given you money. It has actually cost you money. It's interesting that people see possessions of things like cars as manifestation of wealth. So sometimes when you see people showing off their wealth and they say, look at my cars. And they show you all kinds of cars they have as, as a sign of wealth. Wealth is not seen in cars because cars do not appreciate in value all things being equal, except it's an antique car or one of a kind car. Apart from that, your car is an expense to you. To keep it alive, you have to feed it. I mean, Wealth, in a larger sense, includes things like the blessing of God, the peace of God, health, happy marriage, family life. I know all of that is wealth, but that's not what I'm talking about. So, 
when I'm talking about wealth, I'm talking about having abundance of valuable possessions. Wealth defends the rich. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12 says, money is a defense. Those who have money use it to defend themselves, to secure their power and their position. When you have no money, you have no defense. It's, it's just amazing what can happen to people when they have no money. Money is a very powerful force for defense. It will defend your dignity. And when you don't have it, you may lose your dignity. Never ever in your lifetime praise poverty never so what is poverty poverty is a lack of material resources or money poverty can either be absolute or relative absolute poverty is when you don't have enough to take care of basic needs of life relative poverty is when you have met basic necessities but wish for better so relative poverty is when you want something but you can't buy it when you want something you can't buy it you are relatively poor in other words, you go to a shop, you see a shoe. It will look good on your feet. You want to buy it. Everything in you says, this shoe is yours. But you look at it, you turn the backside of the under of the shoe, you see the price, and you quietly <laughs> put it back. That is called relative poverty. So relative poverty is when you desire something which is good for you and it may not be something extraordinary but it's good maybe a, you want a second pair of shoes you want a better trouser you want a better bed you want you know a better car but you cannot buy it <coughs> you are not absolutely poor but relatively poor in relation to that thing you are poor in this world the wealthy are few the you may say well, pastor, money is powerful money led delilah to deceive samson she wasn't a bad girl she wasn't a bad girl she was a nice girl Samson just fell in love with a nice good girl called Delilah if you read the passage it tells you it is after he fell in love with her that she was weaponized with money it wasn't as if they gave her money to say go and tempt Samson no Samson fell in love with a nice good girl called Delilah but Delilah was a poor nice good girl and the Philistines came to sister Delilah and say we can solve your university education problems we can solve your mother's financial problems we can solve your father's financial problems all we want is ask this man one question and get the answer for us how did they get a nice girl who has fallen in love with a nice handsome macho man to betray him money
Money secured the betrayal of Jesus. <laughs> we can bring the devil in, but whatever it is, it was money. <laughs> Judas went to the chief priest and says, how much will this information fetch me and they told him the price and the price was right and he betrayed Jesus you see pastor I will never do that you sure you will be amazed what money will make you do you will be amazed I'm telling you 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 will be shocked yourself that's why when when after judas did that he went to kill himself he was shocked me do that he did it oh yeah people have done things they never thought they have done christians have done things they never thought they, they would do married women have done stuff they never thought they would do Money changed the story of the resurrection. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, Matthew chapter 28, verse 11 to 15, the guards changed the story. The Bible says, While they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders, they consulted together and gave a large sum of money to the soldiers saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Do you know why it is difficult for us to preach the resurrection? It's so difficult. Nobody can believe Jesus rose from the dead. How can a man die? But the guards who were there saw it. The disciples saw it and said he had risen. The guards saw it and went to tell the chief priest he has risen. Believe you me, between the disciples and the guards, the one whose testimony was most authentic was the guard. Because he has no direct interest in the resurrection of Jesus. And if they had come to say, yes, we saw it. He rose from the dead. The resurrection would never have been a contested fact. But they saw it. And they were incentivized to change the story. And now you and I have to spend ages learning christian apologetics and learning hermeneutics and learning all these theories and trying to prove the resurrection of jesus but the guys who saw it were given money so if money was made to change the story of the resurrection Money has to be used to affirm the story of the resurrection. You can be as prayerful as you want. If you are denied money, your influence will be limited. But the church cannot become rich institutionally without its members individually becoming rich because the church is not a business and the church does not generate wealth it is the members who go to make money and because of their love for the work of god give part of their money to the church so if anybody is going to stop the church from making money they are going to make the church feel bad 
teaching people how to make money so that their people will be great prayer warriors mighty prayer warriors who know how to fast for 40 days but are abjectly poor and so far as you maintain your extreme prayer posture and combine it with your poverty the world will love you i'm telling you ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 13 to 17 this wisdom also i have seen under the sun and it seemed great to me in other words this this is great wisdom there was a little city with few men in it and a great king came against it besieged it built great snares around it now there was found in it a poor wise man and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no one remembered that same poor man then i said wisdom is better than strength nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard words of the wise spoken quietly should be heard rather than the shout of a ruler of fools a poor wise man maybe in our time we will say a poor anointed prayer warrior poor wise man the bible says he by his wisdom delivered the city the poor prayer warrior who is on his knees praying for economic transformation in ghana do you ever think if ghana's economy transforms they will go and look for that poor man to say thank you for praying for ghana's transformation no his prayer will be despised in fact there are people when ghana prospers people say these are the people we must get out of the system because they don't know how to do anything all they do is pray 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 and it amounts to nothing and they have no idea it was this man's prayer that delivered the city and blessed the city so far as you remain a poor wise man people would take your wisdom they would take your prayer they would take your anointing but they and use it to their benefit but afterwards there's no respect for you this man saved a city was not recognized because somebody would take credit for what you work for if you are poor do you know that most of the people the world credits as inventors of things are not the ones who invented them yeah most of the big names this one invented electricity this one invented telephone they are not the ones who did it the first man to get to mount everest is not the first man to get to mount everest he was with a poor wise man the poor wise man has been going to mount everest every time but he's not in the history books it's his village he goes to mount everest every day it's like uh, he was born you, you know you, you go to mount everest and come but when you read the history books to ask who is the first man to get mount everest they will mention somebody else's name but there was a poor wise man a shepherd who knows the way but never gets the credit a lot of people who are credited with great inventions in the world bought the idea from poor wise men who developed the idea but don't even understand patent and how to register in fact one particular person whilst he was on his horse going to register somebody had taken a train <laughs> to go and register his idea he went to the patent and he said i invented it he said, well it's already registered somebody came ahead of you 
and registered it. I'm telling you, poverty is, is a devil. It's a devil. I don't mind if you are poor, but don't praise it. Fight it. Hate it. Work against it. But don't accept it as your natural state. 